Greetings and Konnichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, bringing you episode 192 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. So within the last 24 hours, we had uh, some breaking news regarding uh, the new Power Rangers movie. Specifically, RangerNation.com has released three images of upcoming toys tied into the new movie. And when I first looked at them, I'm just kind of like, uh huh. Uh, you know, I looked at them. I had a lot of thoughts uh, about them. And since this show is about where I talk about Power Rangers and Super Sentai, I'm going to talk to you guys about these new toys that were released. So here you go. You're going to get my full blown opinion on this. Uh, if you want to see the images yourself, you can go to rangernation.com where you can you know go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, but I'll have the images uh, scrolling for you guys to look at. And what we'll do today is that we will start with the least offensive toy to the most offensive toy, uh, because this does offend me in multiple ways uh, as we progress here. And the thing I will point out is that these are toys. These are not the real things that we are seeing in the movie. These are not like the props. These are the toys that are made from them. Um... So maybe the movie versions are going to be a little bit different, but I'm going to say it's it's pretty much going to go ahead and be the same. That being said, I will also point out that as far as I can tell, based on the discussions that are happening on uh, the message boards and sources I'm hearing from, is that the toys themselves are not by default legacy toys. And, and what I mean by that is that they're basically making the toys in the same way that they make the regular line of Power Ranger toys, by which I mean you know cheap plastic and you know other crazy stuff like the damn Zord Builder and all that. I would think for a movie that is aiming towards an older audience um, that they would make these toys legacy by default with die-cast metal, uh, intricate paint, and, you know, all the all the bells and whistles, basically. But this doesn't look like the case. It doesn't sound like the case. I could be wrong. Uh, we'll just have to see when the releases come out, most likely in March. Um, but it does seem that the toys are getting the standard, you know, we're going to just make toys as opposed to make uh, quality toys, which is really what Bandai should be doing. Okay, but let's go ahead and talk about the products themselves. Now, the first product we have is the Power Morpher. Uh, and as you'll notice, there are a couple of things. First of all, the coins actually look like freaking coins for a change. One of the issues I have at the, the Comic-Con reveal of the coins is that they didn't look like coins. They did look more like the Dino Gems uh, from Dino Thunder, which, you know, honestly, it does sound like that's going to tie in somewhere into the mythology. In any case, these actually look like refined coins. And this is what I pretty much speculated from the beginning here, is that the coins we would get in the movie would be kind of like whittled down. Again, like I said, in Jurassic Park, when Hammond has his, you know, cane, it's of, you know, a uh, fossilized mosquito at the top in amber. And if you watch in the movie, you'll see, you know, how they have, like, the amber and the mosquito and, like, all this rock, and they got to drill that away and stuff. That's kind of like the idea, is that it's this, you know, rough rock thing they dug out of the earth, and you got to refine it, drill down until you get to the perfect shape. And that seems to be what's happening with the coins here, is that they will find them in that rough mode and so forth, and then they will have to whittle them down and change them into the coins that we have here. How it's done, I'm not exactly sure. We'll obviously see, but they do look like power coins. Now, granted, the images on them are a bit off, uh, to be honest. They look very cartoony in a way. I mean, they really don't look anything like the original designs, and I know what some of you are saying, well, it doesn't have to be original designs, it's the reboot, but Let's be frank here, guys. What exactly is wrong with using the original designs? Why go to the trouble of redesigning it and it doesn't even look better? I mean, look at the Tyrannosaurus in the image here. It looks more like a salamander than a dinosaur. I mean, I know they're both reptiles, but seriously, it doesn't even look like the, the, the Tyrannosaurus. And the Pterodactyl is kind of like, again, very cartoony. Um, I mean, this is something where they probably should have just kept the original designs, but whatever, they decided to change them, whatever. Uh, the Morpher is rather interesting, and, and we'll get into to more about the, 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 the design changes uh, in the next item here. But, but what I want to go ahead and comment on 
is what it seems like they're going for in this particular design uh, is it looks like it's a, it's a piece of rock. If you'll notice in the trailer, they seem to run across something that looks like an asteroid that looks like some sort of uh, rocky material in which they find uh, the power coins in. I would not be surprised if the Morpher's origin is somehow tied into that, that it is a piece of technology that is made from the rock, much in the same way the, the dino coins are. Now, that would be a little bit odd given the mythology of the Power Rangers, but the aesthetic design lends it to that belief. Um, this whole techno-organic thing, which we'll talk about again when we get to another item on this list. Um, you know, because my, my whole understanding of, of the Power Morphers in the Power Rangers mythos is that Ninja created the coins themselves, but it was Zordon Alpha that created the Morphers. Now, the reason I say that is because, again, if you look at the, the history of the show, uh, you know, the morphers and the coins, they don't seem to have been made together. It seems like the morphers were made to harness the power of the coins separately. And that explains a number of things in the series. For example, and again, I've talked about this before, when the rangers get their new ninja coins, they use the morphers, but they turn into you know, the, the same Zoo Ranger outfits. So while Adam has the power of the frog, he still has a Mastodon helmet. And the way I've always interpreted that is that, well, he has the coin, that's what's powering it, but what it's powering is a Mastodon costume, is, is what's happening. So the coins are, in essence, separate from each other. I mean, you could put any animal coin in the Morpher for your Red Ranger, but he would still have a Tyrannosaurus design. That's the way I look at it. And if you even look at Wild West Rangers, that theory would hold credence because of the design is different, and that has nothing to do with the coins. It has everything to do with the Morpher itself and the fact that Zordon decided to make the Command Center look like a barn in the middle of nowhere. But I digress. Um, I would imagine technology be different, but given the design of the coins in the trailer, given the, the, that asteroid rock thing, a ship, whatever it may be, and design the Smorpher, they seem to be going in maybe that direction. Because it almost looks like if this was actually like a legacy toy or something that we actually saw in the movie as a prop, it would look like it's probably carved from a uh, black stone of some kind. Like, well, I think Onyx <laughs> uh, would, would seem to be the idea here. Um, and again, you know, the thing about Power Rangers, at least in the first couple of seasons, is it's magic uh, enhanced by technology. Um, and, and maybe that's kind of what they're doing here, but it does seem to be more uh, of an earthy, again, the bio-organic kind of thing. Overall, I, I'm not as upset about this particular design. I wish it said my from Power Rangers on it, or it said Power Rangers. I wish it kind of opened up. Um, it's just, again, and maybe I'll do a whole podcast on this, it's just some things don't need to be changed and be updated, and the Morpher just didn't seem like one of those things that needed to be changed. The coins definitely don't seem like something needs to be changed, but again, let's see where the movie takes it, what kind of mythos it brings into it to justify that change, I guess, or at least justify its design. Now, speaking about justifying designs, let's talk about the Red Ranger's Power Sword. Okay, so the thing about Zoo Ranger, where the footage from My Morphin came from, is that it was essentially a fantasy Sentai, the first true blown fantasy uh, Sentai. And if you really take away the morphing sequences, it's really like LARPs in modern day. That's what Geki and the others are pretty much doing, is they're LARPing. I mean, look what they're wearing, look at their weapons. It has this old-timey swords and sorcery kind of feel to it. Even when the morphers are enhanced, or excuse me, the power weapons are enhanced by the morphers, it, it has this old-timey kind of feel to it. You know, it has elegance, it's grace to it, uh, other than, you know, the Mastodon, you know, the <laughs> cannon thing, you know, for the Black Ranger. But, but, uh, but you guys kind of get my point to it. What this looks like is it looks like it's something from outer space. And I don't mean that in a negative point. of uh, point. I mean that this looks like it's a weapon that belongs to another Power Ranger team. What did Raptor and I discuss a long time ago when we talked about Ranger teams and costumes and Ranger Strike and all that? That there are different categories that each Ranger team fits into. Magic, Earth Technology, Over Technology, Wild Beasts. Um, 
And of course, Zoo Ranger falls in the Wild Beast, but you can make an argument that it falls under the magic uh, as well, again, given the fantasy elements that Zoo Ranger did have. When you look at this particular weapon, this power sword, it doesn't look like it is has anything to do with either Zoo Ranger or Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. This honestly looks like more of a weapon that you would use in SPD or possibly even Time Force. This looks like it's a weapon from the future and from outer space. Now, again, I don't know what the story is going to be in the origin for this particular weapon, but what this and the Morpher suggest to me is that the movie is ditching that fantasy aesthetic. Now, I'm not saying they had to go ahead and keep it. That's a holdover from Zoo Ranger. But it did fit into the overall theme of the magic versus technology, as Linkara has pointed out a uh, number of times. Because if you really break it down, what Rita's doing and what the Rangers are doing is they are taking that old world type of magic and sorcery and swords and all that kind of stuff and again enhancing it with technology. Rita does this to a degree with the monster Omatic and Finster, um, but she is more along the lines of, of old old world occult dark magic basically. Whereas the Rangers again, are enhancing it with technology, which is why they have things like the Zords and the Command Center and so forth, but their weapons are still kind of that holdover. What, again, this design is suggesting is that's not going to be something we're going to talk about in this movie. That's not going to be one of the overt themes in the film. Even Rita herself seems to be more modern uh, and space-like than she does to be any type of, of fantasy-like creature. Um, and again, I know she and the others were called evil space aliens, and they are space aliens in the show, and that's fine. I mean, it's just that there is that grounded aesthetic to it. I, I'm just kind of... Again, it's not that I dislike it, just I'm kind of worrisome that we're going this whole uh, advanced technology kind of thing without having any type of, you know, grounded sensibility in a way. If that makes any type of sense to you guys, um, it's really hard to articulate this. Um, just because, again, I'm just so used to the aesthetic of my Morphin and how it's been done. The adaptation is, is really going to be hard on all of us to accept. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like it. I know there are people that love it. But again, I don't even know what the demographic of people who like it to hate it ratio is or, or whatever and stuff. It, it just doesn't seem to me like it fits in with what Mighty Morphin was about Um in its, th in its tones and its themes and, and so forth. Again, if you want to say this is a weapon from you know SPD or Time Force, I'd totally buy and say, yep, that definitely seems like something from the show. Um, but it doesn't seem like something that belongs in the Mighty Morphin era. Now, that being said, of course, it's a pretty interesting design. Um, I don't know I've ever seen any type of sword like this. And I'm actually curious to know if it is some sort of form of lightsaber. Uh, because you see that there's like a hilt to it, uh, the red part, and there's just like a little blue part coming out, the solid blue. But the rest of it's kind of this transparent plastic looking thing. So either it is solid like that, and that's like diamond glass or something like that, or indeed this is going to be some sort of lightsaber, which is not unprecedented uh, within Mighty Morphin because, heck, when Jason was battling Cardiotron, he basically turned the Power Sword and the Dragon Dagger into lightsabers to fight him. So, you know, that would be pretty cool if we actually had it, and we don't have to call it lightsabers, it's the Power Sword, but I would love to see him be able to turn it on and off. I would, I'm also kind of curious why we have a blue glow, because he is the Red Ranger, of course, but hey, the, the weapon itself is, is red, so... That's what we got there, and again, it's just, the only thing that's bothersome with me in that is, again, doesn't seem to have that aesthetic that we are going for this whole techno-organic space kind of thing, which segues nicely into the final uh, toy, and obviously the most atrocious. Uh, it is the Xeomorph. Oh, excuse me. It's the Tyrannosaurus Dinosaur. No, 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 excuse me again. Uh, it is the Tyrannosaurus Battlezord. Yes. This is the Tyrannosaurus Battlezord. Where do I begin? Okay. First of all, let's start with the name. I get why they're changing it to Battlezord. I, I actually do get it. When I thought about it for a couple of minutes, I'm like, okay, this does make sense. Because the only reason to change it from Dinozord to Battlezord is because only three of your Zords are actually dinosaurs. 
And I know this has been brought up many times. The saber-toothed tiger and the mastodon are not dinosaurs, and yet they're considered dinosaurs. Okay, granted. But again, just why change the name at this point? You know, everybody knows them as the dinosaurs, so why not keep them the dinosaurs? And, you know, when they say we need battle zord power, one, it just kind of seems redundant, because what's a zord used for? Uh, battle, right? You know, I mean, unless it's a carrier zord, but then the name implies exactly what it does. It carries things, because uh, other zords that are not carrier zords don't usually carry things. But it's kind of like, we need Dinosaur power now. Okay, that makes sense. We need Battle Zord power now. That just sounds like something you would make for a Power Ranger parody or a late Disney, early Neo Saban type of Zord. Uh, that does sound like something that would be in Samurai. So of saying we need Samurai Zords, we need the Battle Zords. And we gotta use our symbol power, which look like kanji, but we're not calling it that because Japan is not a thing here. Yeah, I'm going off on that again. <laughs> um... Okay, so again, they're changing the name to Bowsword. I get, whatever. Um, okay, second, this bioorganic type of thing. Now, I get that the original dinosaurs were very boxy. Because um, actually, if you look at the Sentai, if you look at Sentai Zords prior to Zoo Ranger, they are all very boxy, and they just look like giant cubes stacking up on each other. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you compare that to Zoo Ozer, it's actually kind of funny when you think about it. Um, but really, between Jetman and Zoo Ranger, there was really a quantum leap, leap in design technology. Because if you look at all the Zords previously, first of all, we didn't have animal Zords until Live Man, and those were kind of boxy. They looked a little stiff in places, didn't seem to have much mobility to them. Uh, but when we got to Zoo, uh, Zoo Ranger, you know, just if you look at the old images of them and, and how amazing they were, how lifelike they were, how, look, I mean, they looked so real, and look at the model work that was done, it was just amazing. Uh, now, of course, as time has gone on, we've gotten more slender zords, we've got things that uh, don't look as, as boxy and square, but I think that was, that was a great aesthetic, and I, I just kind of said to myself, again, when we kept hearing uh, all the movie stuff, I was like, I hope they don't change the Zords, I hope they don't change the Zords, because again, that's one of those elements that I don't think needs to be changed, I really think you can take the original designs as they were, scan them into a computer, and update them, and just, I mean, just a little bit, I mean, but make them exactly one for one what they were in the show. I mean, when you take a look at what My War from Power Rangers the movie did uh, for the Ninja Megazord, you can kind of see where they were going with the design changes. I mean, I, I get they, they made the, mouse, uh, the, the wolf's mouth open, and they had to actually give a hand to hold the sword for the ape zord. Um, and that was the first time they really kind of did something like that. Because, again, keep in mind, they were going to originally do that movie with the same aesthetic and design of the show, which means that at some point, I'm sure the Ninja Megazord would have been a guy in a costume as opposed to being CG. But when they, you know, made the decision to, you know, make it uh, a little bit more high budget or at least <laughs> better looking, um, they decided the Zords had to be changed as well and, and thus put in the CG. But now the technology is so much to the fact, uh, it's just, you, you can make the original Zords in 3D. I mean, heck, look what they did over in Super Sentai. If Super Sentai could do it in their dinosaur war movie, there's no reason why Lionsgate can't do it. But for whatever reason, they decided to change into this techno-organic design, and just look at this thing. First of all, I dare you to tell me where the damn eyes are on this thing. I can't find them at all. And what does this look like? Well, as a lot of people point out, it looks like Grimlock from the Bayformers, and it looks like a Xenomorph. It doesn't look like a Tyrannosaurus. It seriously looks like a red Xenomorph. I can't find the eyes anywhere. It has that mouth and everything. It looks like a total design from it. And again, as far as a Bayformer, oh my goodness. This is, this is what pisses me off more than anything else, folks, is for some reason... When the original Transformers movie came out, they basically said, you know what aesthetic we need to have? We need to have it where people are looking at and they have no idea what the hell they're looking at. Because let's just take Optimus Prime as an example here. When he's in his vehicle form, he looks like a truck. He's like, yeah, I see what this is here. 
Then he transforms, and tires are going this way, and limbs and mirrors and stuff's popping out, popping, and you have no idea what the hell is happening. It, pieces are going everywhere, and he's finally this giant robot, and you're like, what the hell is this? I, I can't focus on it. And they move around so much in the films that you can't focus on it. It doesn't look like anything. It looks like garbage. It looks like people just glued things together. And it looks like that then all the films uh, that Michael Bay made. It doesn't look like a, a real thing. And that's what we got here for this Zord. I mean, again, I, this is just one of the hardest things to articulate, because I try to explain this to people, and they don't get like, well, it looks fine to me, but look at it. You can't tell what it is. If you showed anybody, what would they think this is? Do they really think it looks like a T-Rex? No, it looks like a freaking alien. And again, with this techno-organic thing, I mean, okay, when I hear techno-organic, I think of... Beast machines. I think of the bio gel packs on Voyager. I think of technology that's been enhanced uh, with organics or organics enhanced with technology. I think of something that's cybernetic, some sort of cybernetic life form. When I look at this design, it definitely looks like garbage. It doesn't look like it's a mixture of anything. Granted, this is probably the toy version of it. It's not going to be as good as the actual film version, but if the posters are any indication, I don't think it's going to look any better. Because even look at... Here's the weird thing about the posters that came out, the Rangers posing on them. You really have to use uh, your brain or sketch out or something to tell what part they are actually on on their Zords, because I could not tell at all where they're supposed to be. Is Trini supposed to be on the hind legs of the... Sabertooth Tiger? Is Zack supposed to be on the snout or the tusk? Or I have no idea. You can't tell what's going on, and that's what that's what's going to bug me more than anything else. I hate movies where you look at something and you can't tell what the hell it is. Okay, here's a good example. If you go ahead and watch the Avengers movies, you always know which one is Tony Stark. You know which one's Captain America, which one's Iron Man, which one's the Hulk. They're clear, bright daylight, and they're well-defined. They're not overly complicated. They're very simple designs. They're easy on the eyes to go ahead and look at. And even Dawn of, of Justice, for all the, the slack that people have been giving it, yes, they're grittier, they're a little bit more intricate designs, but you know what? From a distance with a shaky cam, I can tell that's Batman. I can tell that's Superman. I can tell that's Wonder Woman. Uh, heck, I can even tell that's Doomsday. But again, look at stuff like the Transformers movies. When, and I shouldn't even call them Transformers, because they're Bayformers. That's what they are. If you look at the Bayformers as they fight, what was that last movie, the one, Age of Extinction? If you didn't know who was who, and you were just watching the battle, you can get lost. And frankly... Every movie I've watched, whether I had seen it in the theater, and I can't believe I spent money on that, or I've watched it on television or whatever, I can barely tell what's going on sometimes, especially the first run-through. Because I don't know who the good guys are, I don't know who the bad guys are, because they're all giant robots with similar muted color schemes. And what I'm afraid of for this movie is that we're going to get it, where we're not going to see who is who, what is what, we're going to get shaky cams, we're going to get lens flares, we're going to get things that are out of focus, and we can't focus on what the hell is going on what we're supposed to look look at. When you see the Tyrannosaurus Dinozord in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TV series, you're like, look at this awesome thing rise, because when it comes out, you see the head, then you see the claws, and you see the feet and the knees, and then it rises up with that beautiful shot, and you're like, oh my god, look at this gorgeousness, and you can soak in the moment, you look at every detail, and it's just so awesome. What I'm afraid this movie's going to do is, like, Tyrannosaurus, vroom, just jumps out. Where'd it go? What, what's that red blur? Oh, my God. Somebody focus the camera. It's going to be like Cloverfield. That's what I'm afraid this movie's going to be. You won't be able to have time to be in awe of the Zords because they're moving by so fast. They're, they're mixing in. I have no idea what, you know, things like the putties or the monsters are going to look like. They're, they're probably going to be CG. I don't know why, but they're going to be CG. And so you're going to have the CGI fest on the screen. You're not going to know what's going on. And, and that's what I'm afraid of. And this design lends credence to that idea that you're not going to see what's going on or have an idea of what's going on. Um, okay, just really quick about the toy itself. For, uh, first, why is there a damn cannon on the back of it? Oh, I know, it doesn't have eyes, so it can't use its eyes la eye lasers. Yes, that's why, that's why it has a cannon. We didn't give it eyes, so it can't have eye lasers. 
Therefore, we have a cannon on its back. Wait, what? <sighs> Why is there a cannon on the back? Why do we... And look, it's got... Apparently, it's got missile launchers on the side, um, right under what its hands... Or maybe those are its hands. It's got a cannon on the back. All the Tyrannosaurus dinosaurs needed was the lasers from its mouth, the lasers from its eyes, and the ability to jump really high and kick things. That's all it really needed. You don't need to do all this extra stuff to it. But yes, it's a reboot. We need all this. But again, if I was in charge, I would just have one-to-one digital recreation of the original Zords. Heck, I would honestly do more practical effects. You know, I'd reestablish Jim Henson's Creature Shop. And hey, could you guys imagine if Jim Henson's Creature Shop had done Goldar back in the day? I mean, seriously, folks, think about it. Uh, okay, something else. Uh, now, I don't know if this is true or not, but word through the grapevine is, is that each of the Zords are going to be sold separately. That they're not going to have the full Megazord, but they are going to go ahead and sell them separately. Now, I, I've been advocating for something like this in regards to uh, what they've been doing over in over here in Japan, is that they will go ahead and re release uh, pieces of the Zords. The only problem I have with that at this point, it, it is really based on my assumptions, of course, is that they will release uh, them in stages. Meaning, they, when the movie comes out, or pre-movie release, they'll release all the Tyrannosaurus Zords. Then, they'll release the Mastodon. Then maybe a couple months later, Triceratops, and, and so forth. And depending on how those sales figures go, it might take a while before we even get the Pterodactyl, um, or they might make in such limited quantities that it's going to be hard to find. I mean, because reasonably what they should do is release all of them at the same time individually and make the same amount for all of them. And then maybe when the movie comes out on Blu-ray or DVD, then make the whole set available uh, as one. But I'm just afraid that the method they're going to have now because of the American consumer and the way that a lot of places like Toys R Us have their business practices with things like pre-orders and so selling out things, that it's going to be extremely hard to find some of these Zords if you don't live near Toys R Us. Because I'll say it once, and I say it again, I lived in a city where the nearest Toys R Us was three hours away and was the only one in the whole damn state. Uh, so I hope these are not Toys R Us exclusives where, yes, they're available online, but not right now. You can add to the car, and we'll let you know when they are available, uh, which they won't be available at all. And good luck calling our stores because we will not tell you what our stocking is because we'll say it's in stock, then you get here, and it's gone, you know, or it's not, it was never here to begin with. Yeah, I'm going off on a lot here and stuff. You see what I mean about the most offensive, and I get more aggravated as we go along here. Okay, so ultimately, where do I stand on this? Uh, I'm likely not going to buy these toys. Maybe the Megazord, if if I have the money for it, but if it's not the Legacy line, I'm not particularly interested, because frankly, the Legacy line should be the default line. Everything they're doing with the Legacy line should be for the default. Uh, of course, minus Zord Builder components, because I... <laughs> Zord Builder, really... Um, yeah, if these aren't going to be legacy items, I'm not, I'm not going to be interested in them at all. I mean, if they come up with the legacy version of the Tyrannosaurus, maybe, but again, that's going to depend on my view of it from the film. Because you know what, guys, I can go into this film and I'll come out like, ah, oh, this is the best movie ever, I love this, this is great, or I'll come out and I'll be one of those guys like, ah, oh, this is horrible, blah, 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 whatever and stuff, and I don't want to be that guy, I really don't, um... But the aesthetic designs just aren't doing it for me. It just doesn't seem right. It doesn't feel right. Um, but again, I hope the film has a good story. I just I just don't see myself buying these. So, All right. I think I've taken enough of your time. But just to summarize, in case you guys tuned out or whatever, uh, the, the battle sword is horrendous. The sword doesn't seem like it belongs in this particular season. And I just don't get some of the odd choices they made with the Morpher. So, hey, there's 30 minutes summed up into 10 seconds. So there you go. But what do you guys think? Are you going to, first of all, do you like the designs? Do you think they're good? Are you going to buy the damn Xenomorph? Or are you just going to go ahead and pass on it? And what do you think of the designs? Are they good? Are they bad? Uh, leave a comment below and let me know. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys for listening. Have a good evening. And the tavern is now closed. <laughs>